Welcome to Momentum Monday today, September 15, 2024. What a massive uh, and quick market recovery we saw uh, last week, um, basically in the majority of the market, um, just when everybody was getting bearish with uh, the S&P closing below its 50-day moving average. Uh, it just printed a couple inside days, Monday, Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, it staged a huge bullish reversal candle. And um, at the end of the day, um, bigger picture perspective, the S&P ended up just making a higher low. And now it's just basically within less than 1% of its all-time highs, just ahead of the yeah. FOMC meeting this week. Howard, did you trade last week or did you do anything? No, I mean... I, like September, I'd said, I was like, it was playing out as a typical September. So I was not smug about it. I was just like, I'll wait to see what happens. Um, you know, I use indexing, so I didn't, it wasn't enough of a sell-off to add. NVIDIA, a lot of stocks were getting close to like Google was getting close to like, ah, I got to make a decision. You know, it's a trend. Uh, it bounced, not great. NVIDIA hit 100 you got to start making, start thinking about it. Is it going to break good bounce right where it needed to? So it's like, so I think the most important thing from last week is what did really break out. So there's a few things that are continue to work, like gold and Bitcoin, number one and number two performing assets of this year, major assets. So what does that really mean? And then you have or, but you have some tech, Oracle, all time highs. What does that mean? Uh, and not just an all-time high, like fucking, I'm not talking about a little move here, right? Um, that's not fake. Again, I don't follow Oracle, like I own it in an index. What's the market cap? It's a half a trillion. So, so that means something, okay? And then you have other companies like APP, which is like a, a marketing uh, data app loving, which we use at StockTwits, right? Mobile ecosystem app developers, we love it. I know from my team that we 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 run app loving and love it. Look at that move, right? In what was a vicious bear market, it's completely recovered. Yeah, go it's to, like uh, open price, yeah. Go to a monthly. It didn't give you a chance, right? Like you don't Gold see curve, yeah. yeah, that's like a Carvana, but with a real product, right? <laughs> like a high margin product. Pretty much, but Carvana is uh not near all time cards. Um no, but it's like the same type of move, right? Except App Levin's right. doing it with like a product that's got like heavy duty margin and a very light business. And I know the product because StockTwits, you know, really does help StockTwits. So, and then you have like Clavio, which is like, I think KBY, which is probably one of the better IPOs kind of basing. So, so the stuff that's, it's not just that we bounce, it's that, oh, and then if we look at Axon, which in many ways is a growth company, because why? um cloud private cloud um cameras uh every cop has to wear a camera body armor and as we saw with tyreek hill this week whether cops like it or not and they're, just, they're not going to get away with not wearing cameras so cameras and in, in for this sake are good and you know what's interesting about axon is if you just said that name to a thousand people uh, and showed the chart, they would think it's Google or Bitcoin. And no one could tell you a thousand people in the street what Axon does, right? That's the Taser company. And I've been long talking about it here for years. Um, so there's stuff that's working. And so, you know, what does that mean? I, I mean, we're still in this healthy market, but, you know, you, but, you know, you, September and October are still, you got to be careful months. Uh, historically yeah they tend to be very volatile uh, big market corrections tend to happen in those months and not only uh, so heading into last week um, I would admit you know I, I wasn't bullish like the only thing that I really liked was um, bonds treasuries and I did buy mm. some calls that you know went up 50 to 100 percent uh, in the middle of the week but once I saw that huge reversal on Wednesday Obviously, I had to participate and I started uh, increasing my long exposure because I have that flexibility. Um, <clears throat> and overall, last week you mentioned gold. Gold miners were among the best performers, uh, but also semiconductors. You know, ever since July, they've been hit pretty hard, but 
every time the indices had a big had a, have a bounce, semiconductors are among the best performers, like SOXA, which is a 3x long uh, semiconductors, was up 30%. Gold miners, the 3x gold miners, they're also up about 30%. Also, you know, uh, but everything bounced really, especially on Wednesday. And then Thursday, Friday, towards the end of the week, it seems like we saw we saw a little bit of rotation towards the more interest rate sensitive sector like home builders and um and biotech like they on Wednesday they didn't do much but Thursday Friday towards the end of the week like the money rotated um towards them here's now which is the 3x long um uh home builders uh it's a terrible stock to trade huge spread like it's really hard to to trade it uh <laughs> short term uh but if you can if you're patient enough, you can you can uh, you know capture some big swings. Um, home so, builders did break up multi homes again. I don't know I, all I, I, them. So here here's a, a chart of the um, biotech uh, ETF XBY. It made another higher low here, mm -hmm. and it continues to just tighten up here near its uh, 52 week highs, and set up for a potential breakout. So I'm thinking that Wednesday when, when there is the FOMC meeting and uh rate cut decision if they maybe cut by 50 basis points we might see a continued strength in exactly those types of stock like biotech that many yeah. of them don't have any earnings or sales so they would benefit from a lower interest rate environment so they can you know in theory have access to cheaper uh, money to work on their projects um, yeah, the, the conspiracy theory, same me, which I'm not, is like, okay, if the Fed's controlled by the president, you know, the government, then there's no need to cut right now. They get an ace in there. You know, the market doesn't need it. Um, the house builders don't seem to be needing it. Well, the, I saw a stat today passed around, I guess from the Wall Street Journal, that it's the highest no mortgage uh moment in american history meaning like i think almost 38 percent of homes have no mortgage so they at this point they printed so much cash there's enough people with cash they don't even need a mortgage so we're in a, some vortex where anybody who tells you they understand the macro is is just full of shit so i have to macro just means as little to me as ever because the count the, the world is a float with bad allocation and and you know there's just so much money like oh wait crash happened because of debt you would think at six percent interest rate weren't we promised that we we're going to have a market you know implosion and u.s debt so i don't think the macro is telling us much other than gold and bitcoin going up so there is a fear trade happening while there is a growth trade happening, it's really fucking boggling my mind because, like, the fear trade is um, big cap tech because right? it, it's hard to beat them, but it's also gold and Bitcoin and Taser, right? Like Axon, which is like, you know, got body armor. So there is this crazy fear trade happening, it's small because gold and Bitcoin relative to the market is not huge. But people are crowding into the fear trade and the banks are starting to act like rate cuts are happening, right? The big pullbacks in Goldman, JP Morgan, it won't be as easy for them. But at the same time, Robinhood speculation continues, right? The stock looks great. Um, but Coinbase on the other side looks terrible. So, um, but Coinbase looks terrible, but Bitcoin looks great still. Um, yeah, so, help, yeah. so um, there's, 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 there's a bit of this fear trade going on. And so I think like risk on risk off is like tough to read here. I think if we see some more things line up like XBI, like you said, like we, we see some more breakouts in high risk only, but the gold Bitcoin thing kind of creeps me out because that means people are really, it could be good because they're hiding out in the wrong assets, but like, I think gold goes much higher um because no one's talking about it right and yeah. um and i think bitcoin bouncing here where it needed to bounce is kind of interesting right compared to other cryptos uh i don't know the true like what the true chart that's not our true chart 
Um, but anyways, I think we, I think it's kind of just September, October, you got to like pick your spots and, um, but there's enough good things happening. It feels like that, uh, I don't think it's a typical September, October. I also think the market, if, if everybody's so, I don't know, is it like 60, 70% of the, of, of people think that Kamala trounced Trump, right? And so if she trans Trump and she's going to win, I think the market was getting to getting comfortable with that this week a little bit too, because they had what to vote like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is when the market ran up. When was the debate? Monday or Tuesday? I'm not sure. I think tu Tuesday or oh, Tuesday. Tuesday. So, you know, when did the market kind of rally? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, so we'll see if that, that, that could mean something. I mean, we'll need more time, but like, it seems pretty obvious that the market was happy that she could handle herself, you know? And so I think people want to put money to work. So we'll see. This week could be interesting. But again, I, you know, that, that's me, my one person reading of the tea leaves. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, we have NVIDIA, which is, has been um, the undisputed market leader uh, since January 2023, uh, right at its 50-day um, moving average. So it it's interesting to see here if it's going to make another lower high or if it's just going to continue higher because yeah. this could be the bellwether for this current market unless there is a really a, this time a real rotation into uh, small caps and for that we need to see Russell 2000 IWM going back ab above 222 223 and if this happens there will be so many um, small cap um, the other stocks the other, there yeah. The breakout. I'm not sharing my chart, but if we pull up Shopify quickly, that's, and I don't know what if it's Shopify or Amazon or Walmart. Like I guess maybe Walmart and Amazon. Walmart is at all time highs, yeah, which is very so, weird. Well, here's here's why because they have a great online business too. So there's a chart that I own Coifin that I'll share. I, I'm not going to share my screen, but anyways, people have to trust me. But uh, e-commerce retail sales as a percent of total sales are right at. The March 20, you know, when COVID started and e-commerce sales exploded. Mm -hmm. um, so the percentage of e-commerce e retail sales, the percentage of total sales is back at all time highs. So it's been in a bear market, um, you know, dropped from 16% down to 14%, you know, over, over three years. And now it's back to 16%. So, so Mercado Libre, good, good one right there. That's truly the leader. Um, Walmart. Um, and then down the line, I think Target's starting to benefit, but down the line, you've got shop. No, not up your place. So Shopify would probably be next down the line, not acting horribly, but again, different. And then Amazon. So I think there, for a couple of years, the world has been digesting this logistical move that was like guaranteed, you know, e-commerce sales are going to be 50% of sales. And then we went sideways for three, four years from March, 2020 to today. And we're just starting to get back above 16%. So what does that mean? It means that this trend is still very healthy and trending back towards 20, 25%. Just won't be as... It, it won't be as fast a growth anymore, but people are, you know, I do almost 90% of my purchases for man stuff, whether it's manscaped or clothes or cycling gear or golf online. Um, and that's for me. And I don't even like ordering stuff online. So, so I think that, and at the same time that e-commerce is exploding company, com companies like Backcountry, which is like an outdoor e-commerce thing, just sold for pennies on the dollar. So e-commerce ain't getting easier. So, so there's still landmines in it. And that's why I think Walmart's done such a great job, right? Like they've, they've taken their low margin customer and figured out a way to, you know, with 20% of this moving online, actually making money off of it. So as a non-Walmart customer, I don't know. I can't explain the experience. I don't know. Do you use Walmart? No, I don't. Yeah. So I think that's part of the, the charm. The people that probably shop there are not investors. So they don't even talk about the stock. Uh, they just go there and spend. So it's not one of those things like Lulu where the customer knows the stock um, and that hasn't helped, you know? So, yeah. 
So Walmart is really a fascinating, uh, you know. Uh, Would you buy it here? No, but I'm saying it's a manifestation of what I'm saying. The 16, you know, I look at Spotify and I look at Netflix, they're part of the e-commerce trend too, right? We're spending more time on online for damn the margins. Um, these things are primed to go higher here, right? Unless we go into a bear market. So there's there, there's just some really interesting trends. I think the mortgage thing really caught my eye that 38% of Americans don't have a mortgage and then the 16% retail uh, e-commerce. Those are the two things that caught my mind. The other thing was Oracle. And I think that has something to do with just security in the cloud and um, wow, Redfin. So what was there? What was the news there? Just a rotation into the... With Zillow? Did Zillow do the same thing? Similar, similar. Zillow is looking similar, yeah. Oh my goodness, that is... Yeah, I gave up on that a long time ago. That is looking very good. And yeah. they just have interesting data and user base. So uh, those look very... I mean, everyone is expecting with interest rates dropping for to see more transactions uh, in real estate, but we'll see. We'll see if that those actually... Those are really good bases, and those companies are not... What's Zillow's market? Only $13 billion. Again, I don't use it, but I was talking to my wife, who's an agent. I was saying, like, if rates, if they drop into the fours, you know, at some point, people will rush to transact, right? People will appreciate that four handle. So there's a lot of pent-up transactions waiting for a four handle on interest rates, and I think they're going to get it, right? You're not going to get zero, um, but you, you know, when people see a four handle, they're going to go, fuck, now's my time to like size down or size up. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you have 36% of homeowners not having mortgage, like these are people that basically. That's what I'm saying. It's so bored, Ivan. Like, like there's so much cash, like that, that. And a lot of it, it's 7% interest rate. If you're rich, you're not, you can't, you don't even want that mortgage. You got to pay cash. So again, I, it's very unique financial after ZERP and COVID and with the shooting of rates from zero to seven, this is a very unique economic environment that a lot of people have supreme confidence in everything they say. And I'm not so sure. And I think where the world is expressing, I'm not so sure is gold and Bitcoin. Right, they're so saying. You're so you're bullish for the next. I'm season. bullish, but I'm confused by the price action and how I'm confused in the macro. I'm bullish on the price action for for risk on, but I'm confused by the macro. And don't let macro drive your decisions. But I'm, I mean, it is interesting that gold and Bitcoin are number one and number two, and they're not cash flow producing assets. Right, yeah. Oracle's a cash machine. Uh, Mercado Libre is a cash machine. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like that makes sense to me. Yeah, just buy what makes sense, and it's and it's actually working. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think macro has never been more confusing, but yet never people have never been more confident. But the price action says you got to be long. Uh, it's just up to your risk profile. You know how long you want to be. You quickly can do that. You went from like neutral to long in a day or two. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. All right, but it has a baby. He's doing great. What are you going to do for my birthday this week? Well, you're not even going to be in the U.S. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so old. The uh, but uh, the uh, but Hawaii was good. It sounds like. Yeah, uh, we loved it. Yeah, all right, it's a great place. All right, everybody have a great week. Ivan, thanks.